This is the lowest point on the surface in the Western Hemisphere, 282 feet below sea level. Behind me is the Panamint Mountain Range with the 11,000 foot telescope peak. This is the driest place in North America, averaging less than two inches of rain per year, with some years seeing none at all. This is also where the record was set for the hottest temperature recorded on Earth at 56 degrees Celsius and 134 degrees Fahrenheit in 1913. This is a land of extremes. This is Death Valley. Located along the eastern boundary of California, Death Valley National Park dates back to 1933 when it was created as a national monument, being upgraded to full park status as recently as 1994. Death Valley is a basin that bottoms out 282 feet below sea level at Badwater Basin, one of several salt pans in the valley. Death Valley sits in the rain shadow of four mountain ranges that sit between it and the Pacific Ocean. Its low base and high steep-sided mountain walls form what is effectively a convection oven, trapping the sun's heat in the air within the valley. The temperature varies throughout the year, with pleasant winters and unbearably hot summers. However, despite the ominous name and the extreme conditions, there is life here. These tiny pupfish are adapted to the salty water here at Salt Creek. The park is also home to a variety of birds, reptiles, insects, and even mammals. Erosion of the mountain's foothills and of former layers of deposition create canyons and badlands, such as these seen here from Zabriskie Point. And down in those badlands, we find this, Golden Canyon, one of the most popular trails in the park. Golden Canyon tells the story of the constant change in Death Valley. These tilted conglomerate layers were once an alluvial fan, material washed out of a canyon and into the valley. Uplift and erosion have once again exposed these rocks. Believe it or not, there used to be a road into this canyon and we can actually see the remains of the asphalt here, which was destroyed by flash floods in 1976. This is a reminder of the power of rainwater to shape landscape. Hiking here on a sunny day in winter is generally safe and pleasant. However, this is not somewhere I'd want to be during or after a storm. I'm following down along a drainage that will eventually find its way into Death Valley, which is of course where, when they have the flash floods, the occasional storm, uh, this is where all of the deposits are carried down to grow those alluvial fans that we see down in the valley. I'm standing at the bottom of the Ubi Hebe crater. This crater was formed when rising magma superheated groundwater creating steam and the pressure of that steam underground created an explosion that spewed rocks out over a huge distance creating this massive crater. This particular crater is around about half a mile wide and about 500 feet deep and there are many other smaller craters in the area. Volcanic action is also responsible for the presence of a wide variety of minerals in Death Valley. Repeated eruptions over 5 million years ago covered the area in ash and minerals. Subsequently, the minerals have also been exposed to oxidation and other chemical changes, leading to a cocktail of different minerals and elements both above and below ground. One of the best places to see this in the park is here at Artist Palette. Here they've identified a number of different elements including iron, aluminium, magnesium and titanium, as well as minerals such as green chloride. The minerals from volcanic activity, as well as those washed into the basin and left in concentrated form as water evaporates, have meant that Death Valley became an important mining centre, especially for borax. This 
is the Mesquite Sand Dunes in the central part of the park near Stovepipe Wells. It's just after sunrise and there's an absolutely beautiful light over the sand this morning. This is Death Valley. Farewell. <laughs>